Hello and welcome. I am so glad you're here. I'm Beth, a creator-based coach with CMH Coaching for Life. I'm here today to help you and those you love create a life you feel grounded and at home in. Think of a life where you feel peace, love for those around you, and in a flow with just enough challenge to keep you happy and creating something wonderful. Sounds like magic, but it's not. You can create that life every single day. You can have a life full of love, excitement, hope, and creation. Our mission at CMH Coaching is to flood the earth with light through compassion, mindfulness, and hope. And I'm going to ask a favor of you. If you like what you see and hear today, think of someone you know that would enjoy and benefit from this message. Our mission is to flood the world with compassion, mindfulness, and hope. Share this with them. But for now, this is time just for you. So settle into whatever you're doing and enjoy this time with the girls where we create that one awesome, amazing, perfect life every one of us is seeking. Yep. So last week we talked about Flora and you know what I noticed this morning when I was, when I was writing and, and looking at the stuff for today's Flora, the first four letters, Flora, the floyer, um, floyer is F L A W flaw. Uh, yeah. And I'm uh, like, Oh, so Flora points out Flora, the floyer will point out all of your flaws. And I thought that was kind of an interesting way to look at it. How'd you guys do with Flora last week? Did you have any experiences with her? Oh, every day. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> do tell, Ben, do tell. No, it's just, it's, it's just um, I'm very aware of my critics, but I think becoming more aware of them, I'm starting to see, oh, maybe there's some in the background that I wasn't aware of. That's so, part no. of what I wanted to talk about today. We want to talk about negative Nelly, but um, ju not just about Nelly, but we want to kind of talk about how the inner critics work together and how one may step forward when another one steps back. And I know you're really good at that. So maybe you can talk with us about that in a little bit. And um, I just, I kind of want to, how they work together, you know, and how we can be aware and begin to sort some of that out of what's going on in our head. Um, I spent the weekend, you know, with my kids last weekend and with my family, and it's just really fun. But at the same time, you get several critics going on in there while you're with different people in different groups. And I noticed I could sort a little bit better. I was like, oh, well, that's not true. I kind of practiced calling them out. Well, that's not true. And you're OK. And we're going to do this. And just step aside, please. You know, and that helped. But it's interesting when you start to sort them. But first, let's talk about Nelly. Yeah. So yeah. Nelly, Nelly will bring up every single time you didn't have a great experience in the past. That's why she's called negative, negative Nelly. She's like this, um, this part of you that just keeps the running list of all of the negative experiences and all of the negative things that you need to be aware of if you're going to move forward. Like she will tell you, when you were 12, the super embarrassing moment that you had in junior high or the epic <laughs> fail you had in speech class or when you got a D in college because you were freshman and you were totally confused and didn't know all that stuff was done was needful. But she's going to point out to you that that could very well happen again. If you were clueless, then you could be clueless again. And she's going to use all of these different things, you know, all the times your family hurt your feelings or somebody teased you or they didn't understand you. She's got a, got this long, it's like Santa Claus's list, only it's just not naughty and nice. It's just all naughty, just all the bad things that ever happened. I think Flora uses her, Flora the Floyer uses her as the snitch, oh, right? See that. So like the snitch because she's got all this junk right and so flora maybe goes to her and says hey what you got what dirt you got huh yeah 
She's her paralegal or whatever. She's her. <laughs> yeah. Like the paralegal for Flora. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I can see that. Yeah. But you know, you can kind of see she'd be friends with Flora. She'd be friends with Walter, right? Walter, the warrior, because she's got all this stuff that was bad in the past that Walter could kind of forecast with in the future or Donna, the doubter. She's an integral part. But what I'm trying to figure out is, okay, so she'll, she may have her list and she may work with Flora, but how do you tell who you're working with and how do you tell, how do you un, you know, take them apart on they're melded together? How do you get them apart to where you can kind of tease them apart? What do you know, Jen? I know this is something you're good at. Well, first of all, I mean. What I would, I would ask is like, well, do they need to be teased apart? Because oh. if they're working as a group, there may be a reason why. Okay. So let's address them as a group. And then, you know, that may be that, you know, it's more of a, it's more of like a group think, so to speak. Um, <laughs> well, instead of group think, then can you teach them as a group? Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I sometimes call all my, all my negative, my, my naysayers together and just sit them down and say, okay, girls, I hear you loud and clear. What's going on? You know, okay. and let's talk because sometimes I have to ask, is it, is it these things going on or is it just my brain being a jerk to me? You know, is my brain just bringing up something that is just a pattern or is there something deeper, which could be like the parts, these parts. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's what I do. I just kind of figure it out and address it. And then it's interesting because if one really is loud, maybe she's the ringleader. And if I dress her, maybe the others don't need anymore because they kind of got behind her and said, yeah, me too. You know, so just right. So just, and everybody's, she's going to be voice for the group. Yeah. Yeah. And so sometimes, you know, I, and sometimes it's like, no, I have to address everybody. And, and because I, I find that there's a lot of bleed over from one to the other. Uh-huh. That sometimes I really just can't say, okay, this is this is strictly worry, but no, there's also some negativity from Nelly going on in there, you know. So that why are these working together, or do I even need to know why? You know, I I I I think sometimes, not all the times, but sometimes I can get in that trap of having to know the reasons why when it doesn't isn't necessary. And there's too many questions, and then the questions keep you from dealing with it. Yeah, which Almost they can like be like another like, inner critic. Well, they just they want to distract you, you know. Right. So, yeah, so distracting Debbie or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so it's you know, I usually go with the loudest voice, and then you know, if whoever, somebody else pipes up, okay, what what's this, you know? But that's, that's how I would work. It through. Yeah. I mean, every, everybody is different. Everybody's going to have a, a, a way that they do this. Um, so it's not like, it's not one way is the way, you know, however you can connect and interact and get to know yourself better and, and meet your needs is how you do it. And that's fine. That's correct for you. That is correct for you. Yeah. And that's a really important point because we are all completely different as human beings. So it only stands to reason we'd be very different in how we work with our inner critics. Absolutely. But I think um, universally we work with them in love. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The way we approach that is going to be different, right? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times, (laughs) so they just want to be heard. I mean, for some reason they were never heard in the past. So just let them give you all the evidence and let them have their voice. And as long as you are in that space of not accepting it as truth. Right. And you say, you're standing a little taller as the center yeah. itself. You're separate from it. And you're just saying, yeah, I'm, I totally, totally get why you feel that way. And you should feel that way, feel that way. But do you want to feel different? You know, or what nice can I help you? Yeah. 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 So it just, it really, it depends on each situation and each voice. So I like that's how I do it. Yeah, that's really helpful. Jason, you look like you had something you wanted to say. Yeah, I think I I was actually thinking back as you were saying that, Jen, to an exercise that I had done with my kids where, you know, when they were being super critical of themselves, that okay, let's write everything down. Write it all down, guys. What tell me everything that's wrong with you. 
what is it? You know, let's just get it on paper. And as they would write stuff down, they had like the aha moments of like, what? That is so dumb. Why would I even think that? You right. know, and then, and some things seemed true. And mm-hmm. so then they could just say, well, oh, now look at it and determine, well, if if you feel like it's true, let's let's talk about this, you know, let's, let's share it. And I, and it's interesting because fast forward, like 20 years, Mm -hmm. um, I'm struggling. I'm trying to create a business. I'm trying to do all these things. And I have negative Nelly there and Got her Walter list of Villager. all the things that went wrong. Uh-huh. Yes. And uh, just all these things stopping me and my daughter, sometimes we need somebody else. So my daughter said, mom, come here, come sit down. Let's chat, write down everything. So it took me through that exercise. And even though in my brain, I knew how to do it, right? Mm -hmm. I I had taught them, but I I needed somebody else Mm -hmm. to help me through that and to help process that out so that I could get it out and get it away. And Mm -hmm. I've done other exercises where I've written it down and then gone out to the, to the um, fireplace and burn them all. (laughs) (laughs) Not true. We're letting that go. But yeah, for me, kinesthetic, I, I am a very kinesthetic learner. And so for me, those type of things have been super helpful on combating those not I guess recognizing and then just saying okay here's the proof here the proof is in the pudding sweetie let's look at it right (laughs) I I love that JC two points I absolutely love about that is um one is that sometimes our inner work that we do we can't do it all by ourselves we have to have somebody help us because we have to have a little bit more of an objective objective view or somebody to say have you looked in this scary little dark corner yet? You know, that type of thing. And so I think that's important sometimes to have the, the, the coach, the friend, the therapist, whatever help you with that. So you can always do everything on your own. The other thing that I would say is, because I will sometimes ask this of, of whatever's being presented to me, I will ask, did somebody tell you this in the past? Oh, are these somebody else's words? I like that. Nine times out of 10, they're probably going to be. Or they're going to be, you heard something and you created your own thing off of it. So mm-hmm. that's a good way to sometimes get to the root and just say, you know what? Do you want, let's believe something different. Or how did it make you feel when she told you that? You know, and, and those type of things. But those, those are just two points. Those are excellent points. Excellent, excellent. Your journaling, JC, was really helpful for sorting out your voices, it sounds like. Yeah? Yeah, that's- very very much so. Even yeah. though I didn't have like a name for them, I could just see that, you know, these things really aren't true. <laughs> no, maybe they put it down on paper. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know um, for me, I need to come out of my head and into something physical in order mm-hmm. to sort those things out and to be able to hear those voices. So writing like that works really well for me. I know for you, Jen, going out in nature makes a big difference. Yeah. 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 I have to, I think a little bit on that physical part, I have to like put myself in a different environment, even Mm -hmm. if it's just walking into another room, Mm -hmm. but um, because sometimes those voices won't leave me alone. (laughs) So it's like, "Eh," you know, but almost giving them a distraction a little bit as I try and work it through and process it. And sometimes it's all, all it is, is I hear you. I just don't know what to do with it right now, but let's just be with this. I hear you. I'm aware of you now. Yeah. Yeah. And you can still respond in love. Mm -hmm. Well, I came across a book this week. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. It's called Brainwash. And the cover of the book caught my attention because it's a picture of a brain made out of a sponge that's all sudsy, like it's being washed all full of soap. And like brainwash <laughs> book is written by a guy named David Perm- Perlmutter. Perlmutter. Um, I'm going to read it. It's just on order. But I did a little bit of checking because what he does is he puts down about eight different ways to clean your brain. Mm-hmm. And oh, one of that. them 
Yeah, one of them, Jen, was being out in nature. And he quoted very, very fascinating studies, two different studies, and he, he, a project that they did, a 10-minute power-up where he talks about incorporating vitamin N like nature, vitamin N. Oh, I love it. Vitamin N. Going to go out and get some vitamin N. And he says, and if you can get sunshine at the same time, you can get N and D better for both. But his suggestion was take 10 minutes, go outside. He said, even in a parking lot, but you want to be around something green. So if there's a few trees in the parking lot, like you're at work, or if you can go out where there are more trees, but you want to be in nature and around trees, set your timer on your phone for 10 minutes and then put your phone in airplane mode just for 10 minutes, which I thought was a good point. Put it in airplane mode so you're completely disconnected and then take 10 minutes and just wander around. Not a purposeful walk, not something with a goal. Right. What did you say? Ramble? I call them my rambles. I just go ramble in the woods. Mm -hmm. Just see what I can see. Yeah. And listen, right? Listen to what you might hear a bird. You might hear the wind in the leaves, but just for that 10 minutes, that subtlety gets you completely out of your head. And the reason that he created this power-up idea were were these two different uh, studies, both of them from 2018, where they had um, students who had college lectures outside And then they measured Mm -hmm. students that had them in the classroom and the kids that worked outside, the students were able to engage in the next lesson much more easily. And they engaged, they learned more from being out in right? Really cool. The other one that he cited was another 2018 study between parents and children in having conversations outside. The conversations were higher quality than the ones that were inside. And when I looked at that, I'm like, okay, so how do we apply that with our inner critics? Because the goal for the whole, the whole series here is to help you to feel more confident in creating the relationships with the people around you, right? Think about what happens when you're outside. Jen, I know you're really, really accomplished in this area. You really have a lot of experience in your rambles and you're outside. What do they do for you? Oh, I calm peace clarity. I mean, my worries go, but I get very like inquisitive and curious and and adventure. And I start looking at things like like mushrooms. I start looking at the rocks. You see, this is what I've always done my whole life. I'm I'm the one that is like pulling back the the leaves. I mean, I just taking pictures and type of thing. I just kind of, I get out of my head. Yeah. And it's like your whole self just kind of opens. You just yeah. kind of open up. It's like your lotus flower. You just open up. Yeah. And it's you're recess for an adult. I mean, I love it. Yeah. So you think about that. If you were having a meeting with your inner critics and you were outside, it would probably be much more productive, right? They'd be more open. And if you were having conversations outside, it might be more productive as well because everything's more open. So just the challenge this week, let's all try this. 10 minutes either no phone or airplane mode outside for a ramble, a wander every day. You want to try it? I don't know if I can wander. That's my I know it's different to wander. Like I'm all like going, yes, wander. (laughs) Just go wander. And 10 minutes isn't very long. (laughs) Right. I get lost when I get going and I just, I'm like, Oh, it's so funny. Cause my husband will come home and yell out into the woods. Jen, I'm, Oh, here, you know, I'm out here. The time. <laughs> like where are you rambling? Oh, I'm down here by the stream, you know, type thing. You know? Yeah. But let's see, let's see if we can prove that true, that we can have these conversations with ourselves, that we can disconnect, that we can increase the quality of our lives and see if it doesn't help us feel more confident. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And more clear, like, and you said the clarity that you get and more open just in 10 minutes. I think we could all do 10 minutes, right? Of wandering, JC, no goal. The only goal is to just wander for 10 minutes. You want to try it? I'll try it. All right. And our girls, y'all try it. And then we can all talk together about it and see how it goes next week. Um, it lets us sit quietly without distraction. 
And that's what we need in order to really connect with our, ourselves. Yeah. I love it. And you guys, as you're watching this on the 5050 Girl Club, put a commitment down. You know, are you in? Are you in with us? Because I'm going to try it. You know, it's going to be hard for me, but are you in? <laughs> We want to hear from you. Yeah. Tell everybody what your regular exercise is and how that works. Come on, okay. share, press it up. <laughs> My regular exercise is, is a little, it, not as insane as it used to be, but I get up really early and I, now that it's dark, I have a spotlight and I go out for a run, which is minimum of, you know, three miles, usually three to four miles. Oh, and wow. That's just. Yeah. But I'm out, which I love. But again, yeah. it's all a purpose. I, my, and my husband, he's he's like, okay, can't we just go out for like a nice relaxing bike ride? And I'm like, no, I have to PR on this. And I'm like, why? I just, so this is going to be good for me because I need to let that go and just be and enjoy. Life is meant to be enjoyed, right? It's yeah. what we're here for. Yeah. I just reread because it's my favorite part of the book from the book club the you know yeah. the sacred rest is the creative rest part I'm like I because I know how to do this uh -huh. be in life just be JC this could be part of your creative rest <laughs> and that is where that was my lowest score is that creative rest I mean oh, this will be perfect which is, for you like, yeah yeah I mean that was the the one spot that I really really needed help with so clearly yeah. I need to read that yeah That'll be good. Okay. But only 10 minutes after 10 minutes, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You don't have to get lost for a long time. You know, yeah. Just wandering. It'll be all good. Anything else you guys want to talk about uh, negative Nelly or anything else that needs to come up before we sayonara and move on back to the purpose of the day. No, it's all good. Enjoy. Okay. Boy, the change of the season and it's yeah, back in it's the, beautiful. I know our sunsets and our sunrises have been stunning, <laughs> stunning. And I've just been, you know, when I go out and take care of the horses, that's something that I can see is just like the the beauty of the skies and just grateful for a creator that creates who is the master artist, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And e even people who paint can't paint like that. It's just incredible. Yeah. It is amazing. It is amazing. Well, we have some upcoming events. Um, Jen's doing, for all of the people who are in our creator-based life program, Jen's doing a community event on Wednesday night. Yeah. You want to tell us a little bit about what that's going to be? It's actually on the 16th. So it's not this Wednesday. But oh, no, it is. It is. Yes. Wait, is it this Wednesday? Yeah, yeah it is. Oh, right. For this Wednesday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess well, aren't we glad we brought that up. Yes, we have that happening. <laughs> I, I would have I would have looked at my calendar and I'd like, wait a minute, how come this register? Um <laughs> hello, this has been my life lately. Um, um the what we're going to be doing is looking back at the past year of growth and learning and it's kind of like this harvest time oh everything. So, yeah that's what we're going to be doing that'll be beautiful and to go in and do our harvesting and see what the year has brought and for all the women that have been in that group this year they started in january and so they've been here now for 11 months it's a 12 month long program and so they're nearly finished so this is going to be a really perfect place to do some harvest and to see what we're what we're reaping because of all the work that they've put in this year. So that's going to be really beautiful. I'm excited to see it Wednesday night. It's going to be seven central yes. for all of those in our group. Yeah, that's going to be great. And then we've got mastermind group coming up on Monday and we've got coaching clear coming up the following Tuesday. And we've always got 50, 50 girl club going on. JC, you want to talk a little bit about 50, 50 girl club, what that's about? Yeah. Yes. So those of you who are listening to our podcast, we have a Facebook page that is called 5050 Girl Club. And I, gosh, Beth and Jen, I've noticed we've had a lot of new members that have joined recently. It's a, it's a dollar 99 a month. 
And it just, it's a place of refuge. It's a place of connection. It's a place of coming and learning and kind of just like that phase one of, hey, you know, I don't really know if I want to have a personal coach. I don't really know if I want to do group coaching. I don't, I don't know about any of that, but it's like an intro to that. And you get so much from it. I, you, you get us Facebook live and um, there's a lot of, oh man, a, a lot going on. In 50 there's 50. book club. Yeah. Tell us about Trey Vega book yeah. club. Yep. Trey Vega Book Club is a is a weekly book club and it is virtual and we've got people from uh, from coast to coast um, from New York to Oregon and um, all throughout. And it's a place where we can come and be one in purpose. So we're reading the same book, but we all have different life experiences. And so when we come and we share about that common theme. And this this month it's uh, Sacred Rest by Sandra Dalton. And it's just been a, a joy and a pleasure to be able to have this book club and hear from folks all over. Yeah, yes, so many different people. And then we have another workshop coming. A part of being a member of the 5050 Girl Club is also the monthly Jumpstart workshops. And we have a right. Jumpstart that's coming up the first weekend in December on tapping for tension and for holiday stress that I think will be really timely so that we can help you with any stresses and tension that you're going through with your holiday business. So yeah. It's true though. And tapping is amazing and it's free and it's non-medical and it's very effective, proven effective. It's amazing. So we got lots going on, lots coming up, but for this week, yeah. We're going to do 10 minutes of wandering outdoors and we're going to keep working with negative Nelly because next week we'll be talking about Stephanie, the storyteller, and she is hands down my favorite inner critic because she is a creative genius. So, so next week. Yeah. We'll sign yeah. up. Great to see everybody. We'll talk to you in a week. Same time, same bad channel. Bye, guys. Bye, y'all. Joining us today in a creator-based life, I hope you felt that compassion, mindfulness, and hope you came seeking today. You can find more of it at cmhcoaching.com or on linktree slash cmhcoaching. Of course, any social media outlet, we're there too. Because you felt the benefit and light in this message, please invite those you care deeply about to join us. Help us to create a ripple effect across the globe of compassion, mindfulness, and hope. Then we can create a creator-based life together. Have a great week, y'all. We'll talk to you soon. Share with you, I can choose a better way with everything.